really a 91 year old person, but my body tells me that, but as long as I have a pain pressure, I had I like working front and back and having the back to the part of the front. So, uh, I mean, basically you make a flat painting and then you want it to come out in the world so you bring the back into it. <laughs> so this one, I mean, the front is all the metallic colors and the back is black. So it makes it's, it's like a hug, you know. <laughs> These are both reversible. The thing is, this side is the primary colors, red, yellow, blue, and the other side is the secondaries, orange, purple, green. And if you unfold it, it's a circle, and if you hang it the other way, you get like this one. <laughs> and this squaring a circle, it's because the, they were painted on a circle, and the primaries are in the front of the secondaries are in the back, and then when you cut it, you see the other side as well. Susan Weil is one of the most inventive and innovative artists working today. And ever since she returned to New York in the late 40s and collaborated with Robert Rauschenberg and on the blueprints, um, that was, by the way, her idea. Um, she has been producing groundbreaking works. She's known for breaking the picture plane. And what that means is she deconstructs and reconstructs the image, the flat two-dimensional image, and thereby creates an affinity with cubism, futurism, and the boundaries of abstract expressionism, while simultaneously dismissing them and creating a language and a vocabulary that's uniquely Susan Wilde. Wilde has always stood apart from her contemporaries. She has never been afraid to pursue figuration and reference of reality in her paintings. She unabashedly draws inspiration from her childhood spent living on a farm and her summer journeys to a remote island in the Long Island Sound. A reference for nature and personal narrative is threaded throughout her work. She is particularly interested in themes of renewal and shifts in the natural world, including the changes in seasons, transition from day to night, and the decay of trees. New York was a fervor of artistic activity from the mid-1940s until the late 1970s. Institutions such as Black Mountain College in North Carolina were established, embodying the radical spirit of the time. Wilde was an integral member of that community and studied under Joseph Albers. Her peers included William and Elaine de Cooney, Jasper Jones, Robert Rauschenberg, Miles Cunningham, John Cage, and Cy Twombly. Well, the thing that brought us to Black Mountain was hearing about what was going on there, and so people who were intensive about their creative focus, whatever it was, they found their way there. And uh, so it was like a magnet for, in a very conservative time, for people who were uh, wanted a creative life and uh, in a, this community which was so vibrant and it was just a wonderful thing to find your way there. Leaving Black Mountain in 1949, Wilde arrived in New York City when the art scene erupted. Working with other visual artists, dancers and musicians, she was at the heart of the city's renaissance. She participated in the happenings and elements of dance, poetry and theater found their way into her work. Well, I mean, it's just part of the creative process. I mean, all of our friends were creative people, and we think with them, talk with them, share thoughts, and so on. And back when uh, art was so much changing, 
The dialogue with the artist was intensely important to us. And uh, we all cared about each other and thought about each other's work. It was a lively time. Boundless in her creative search, she united the most unexpected materials into lyrical assemblages while engaged in what she describes as swapping, trading and crumpling. Setting static picture planes into motion, she articulated the disjunctive quality of present day society. Not only do her works break free from the picture plane, but they also tease viewers and force them to reevaluate their perceptions of reality and space. Wilde was a silent maverick of sorts. Although she was outstanding among her peers, she remained some distance away from the limelight. Like many other female artists of the time, she was overwhelmed by her male counterparts and only came into prominence later in life, gaining recognition first in Europe, particularly in Sweden where her attunement to nature resonated with particular strength. Today, of course, the equation has changed and works are being sought by museums and collectors around the globe. Susan Wilde challenges you and surprises you. Her deep interest in the sequential movement in time. What that means is how do you go about creating a movement on a flat two-dimensional surface, the picture plane. And that is the poetry of Susan Wilde. This is a quintessential Susan Weil. Walking figure is an acrylic on linen painted in 1969. It incorporates the two themes most commonly seen in Susan Weil's work, the depiction of motion and the expression of time. Weil often divides and reorders the composition, making you question perspective and dimension, but also to give you the feeling of movement or the passage of time. In this piece, we're aware that we're looking at a walking figure, but what's great about Susan Weil is how she gets you there. Her lines and forms are simplified. There's rarely details, but as you follow the figure from right to left, you question whether you're seeing the figure or a shadow being eclipsed by a figure. Finally, the color is very typical of Susan Weil. The blue reminds us of her iconic blueprints exhibited in MoMA in the 1950s and again in 2018. This blue is also a nod to her favorite artist, Matisse. When I think of Susan Weil, I think of perspective. It's a subject of her work. She's often showing you a particular perspective of figures, um, of light, of a room, of a tree. So it's the subject of her work. But it's also, you know, this overlying theme where you see um, Everything that we're looking at when you look at Susan Miles' work is from her unique perspective. The materials can change. She's changed the scale that she works in. She's, you know, used found objects, collage, but it's all, it's all her perspective. It's a perspective that I'm jealous of. I'm jealous of the world that she lives in, the way she sees everything. I feel very lucky that she can articulate what that world looks like that we're blessed that we get to view these works and have them in our lives um, because we're just the walking figures in Susan Wilde's world a little bit. And, um, you know, she, she makes us all step back and reflect on, you know, things that are passing us by every day.